Whether it's a loading screen, a health bar, stats, or a countdown timer, progress bars are an absolutely crucial part of game design. A progress bar is an incredibly quick way to show information to your player at a glance, and it's much easier and faster than making the player read a big list of numbers. Hi there, I'm Matt, and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at building a progress bar system for your game. We're going to use Unity's UI to build a dynamic progress bar and write the code we need to make it function and update in the editor. We're also going to look at building a radial progress bar for even more flexibility and how we can use the create menu to easily add our progress bars into our game's UI with just a few clicks. So why don't we get started? So here's a demo I've prepared. As you can see, it's just a basic character menu screen. We've got some stats up here at the top, such as the character's name, their level and experience points. Underneath that, we've got a few skill names and their current experience for that skill. The assets I'm using here are from Kenny, as well as some from the asset store. I found them super useful for building up a quick UI menu like this. So looking at this menu, it's quite nice, but I think we could really spruce it up a bit with some progress bars. Up here, we can see there's a perfect spot for a progress bar so the player can easily visualize how far they are to the next level. I've also got icons here for these skills. So I think it would be really cool if we could add a circular progress bar that fills up around the center of the icons to demonstrate their skill level. I think that'll really add some style to the menu and differentiate a bit from standard bars. This means that we're going to need to design two different progress bars, but we're actually going to just use one single script to handle the whole thing. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is design our experience bar for Philip the Brave. Let's go over here to our header, and choose UI image. Let's just put it in place here, something like that. This is going to be the background for our box. Let's pick a nice backdrop for it. I'm going to use this image because I quite like how it has these nice little border lines and this will fit nicely as a border for our fill. So as this will be our parent component, let's go up here and name this progress bar. Next, we'll add another image as a child to this bar. And if we go over here and hold Alt down on our keyboard, we can tell this image to fill to its parent size, like so. Now, there's actually a number of different ways we could create the progress bar effect. For instance, we could go over here and change the pivot or scale of the bar based on how full we want it to be. And while this is okay for a linear bar, it's not as flexible for our radial option and means we have to do more work. So instead, we're actually going to use the fill type in our image component. First, we'll need to select an image for our bar. I quite like the shading on this one here, so let's use that one. As you can see, it defaults to a scale nine tiled texture, which is exactly what we want. We get these nice curved edges here for our bar, but we want the functionality of the fill feature from the image component. The only problem is that when we go in and we change to filled, we end up with this stretchy, blurry, janky looking mess. There is a solution though, thanks to the mask component. Let's duplicate this and make it a child here. We'll name this layer fill, and let's set this back to sliced. Let's name the parent mask. Let's change the fill method to horizontal and add a mask component. We'll turn off the show mask graphic so we can see behind it and change the fill amount. Now you can see we keep our bar image nice and sliced, but we take advantage of the images fill feature too to wipe across our background using the mask above. So that's the visuals ready. Let's write some code. Let's select our main game object and create a new script called progress bar. At the top here, we'll add a public int called maximum and another one called current. We'll also add the UI namespace and declare a public image called mask. Then below our update method, we'll write a method called get current fill. And we'll use this to determine the fill amount. So we'll calculate the fill percentage by simply dividing the current value by the maximum value. Float fill amount equals float current divided by float maximum. 
we'll then assign that to the fill amount of our mask. Then we'll add this to our update method. And let's also add the execute in edit mode attribute so we can see it in the inspector. Now, if we head back into Unity, I'll just set the fill to a nicer color to see. If we assign our mask and some values, so the maximum of 100, we can see that if we drag our current value, our progress bar updates accordingly. So we have a nice and functional progress bar. That's great. But if you know anything about this channel, you know I like to take things a little bit further than functional. And I'm a fan of making tools that are flexible. So let's make this bar a little bit more flexible, shall we? A lot of progress bars like this have some kind of threshold calculation. Let's suppose we hit our current threshold of 100. If we were then to increase our maximum threshold, our progress bar would need to be reset to zero in order to look correct. And we'd have to do that every time we leveled up, which isn't ideal. Instead, it would be great if our previous level's XP could be considered in this. So we can do this by adding a minimum offset to our bar. Back in Visual Studio, let's create a new public int called minimum. And let's change our fill method to take this into account. So let's create a float called current offset, which will subtract the minimum from our current value and a float called maximum offset, where we will subtract the minimum from the maximum value. And then let's use these values to calculate our fill amount instead. Now, if we go back into Unity and set our minimum to 100, our maximum to 150 and our current to 125, our bar is now half full, which makes it much more flexible. Something that I think would also be really useful is being able to change the color of the bar easily. So let's add a reference to our fill image in our script and also a color property. And then let's set the fill color to the bar color. And let's assign that. And now we can easily choose a color for our bar. Lovely. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Now let's save this as a prefab so we can easily reuse it. What we'll do is create a new folder called resources and a folder inside there called UI. And then let's drop this in there and call it linear progress bar. I'd like to add progress bars to the health, mana and stamina segments here, but instead of just duplicating it from the hierarchy or dragging it from our project window, it would be great if we could just right click here and add it. So let's go into our progress bar script. Firstly, let's add a define directive for the Unity editor. Then let's create a new public static method called add linear progress bar. And let's also wrap this in the define directive. Let's add a menu item attribute and let's define a path for it in the game object menu. Game object UI slash linear progress bar should do. In here, we'll instantiate the linear progress bar and load it from the UI folder we created in the resources folder. Then let's add it to the transform of our currently selected game object in the hierarchy by typing selection.activeGameObject.transform and we'll set the world position to false. Now, if we head back to Unity, we go to our stats, choose health, down to UI, click linear progress bar, a new progress bar is added. Now all that's left is to make the radial bars. The good news is it's super easy to make a radial bar now that all of this is set up. Now let's go to our one-handed skill over here and create a new image. We'll add our gray circle here. And put it in place. This will be the background for our bar. Now let's duplicate it three times. One for the mask and once again for the fill. And then let's parent them to one another. However, this time the middle one is actually going to be our fill and the child here is going to be our mask. And I will just set these to anchor and let's just indent this by about 20. The fill will indent by about five 
And we'll also swap the image just for a plain circle here. And let's set the color to yellow for now so we can see it better. And of course, set the type to filled and the fill origin to the top. You could possibly have the mask switched off depending on how you want your radial bar to function. Maybe it would look better off if it's for a timer, but I quite like this little overlay as I think it looks better for tracking skill experience. Now let's name our bar and add our progress bar script and hook everything up. And voila, like that, a super easy and flexible radial progress bar. Again, we can also save this one as a prefab and add it to our menu for further ease of access. And there we have it. With a single script, we've managed to create two progress bars by taking advantage of the fill feature in the image component. I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with it or different styles of bars you could create. You could perhaps change the color of the bar based on its fill amount, or combine various masks to create interesting shapes. Regardless, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, I'd love for you to give it a like and leave a comment below. I've really enjoyed hearing all your feedback so far, and many of you seem super passionate, so I'm thrilled to announce that I've set up a Discord channel, which you're welcome to join and chat about game dev with me, as well as share ideas about potential future videos and hear what I'm currently working on. So follow the link below if you're interested in that. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more game dev tips, tricks and tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe either using the button or the link on screen and you'll be able to see when a new video from me goes live. Also, feel free to check out some of the other videos from the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.